Hello again in this video clip series, My Journey to God in a Very Secularized World. Continuing on our, our talk of uh, the, the cause of this, the great, uh, this great apostasy, we're, we're talking about the great responsibility of priests and bishops, but also that each of us live the vocation that, God, that we have given from God and the strategy of the Freemasonry to invert all of these things as God has made it for the destruction of our society and to rise their dictatorship and in the end to take us with them to hell. You know, how, how different is the meaning of the slogan of the 68 Revolution, Continual Struggle, and the, what you find in the Catechism, Dower Combat with the Powers of Evil in the Catechism of the Catholic Church for Adults. Number 409. One, uh, one is a struggle against the legitimate authority as do spoiled, arrogant, capricious children against their parents. And the other is a combat against the powers of evil. It is incredible how we have turned upside down everything in our blind pride today. As Isaiah 5 says, Woe to those who call God evil good and good evil. The people of the generation of 68, I, I finished high school in 1970, so I was basically in that era, the, they are now, who rebelled against all of authority, they are now in power today. Uh, though they thought they thought they thought they would find happiness by rebelling against all authority and freedom by throwing out all rules and regulation, rejecting all authority and God, but they unwittingly fell under the dominion of the prince of the world, Satan, who they believe does not even exist. Unfortunately, the great majority of the people of the generation of 68 did not receive true Christian love from their parents, unfortunately. So many people are finally opening their eyes to the world situation and want to march and make political manifestations or rebel, but very few are willing to turn to God, to, to Christ crucified with Mary at the foot of the cross, and pray and make sacrifices in reparation, which is the true and lasting solution. When our Lord said, What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder, the disciples said to Jesus, if such is the case of a man <clears throat> with his wife, it is not expedient to marry. The disciples knew what Jesus was saying. This is hard. Do you know what the divorce rate was in the United States in 1960? 5%. Were human beings different then? What was it that made 95% of the marriages stay together until death? Now you look at it and you say, who, who could possibly expect today to stay together until death? Even though many who stayed together years ago would have divorced if they lived together today, those who stayed together years ago when the spouse died, they sobbed and cried like babies. So the church basically says, we recognize those, ter the, 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 those terrible things happen. But unfortunately, when you open the door to divorce, everybody wants to run through it to take the always the easier path that doesn't leave the, toward Calvary into heaven. Did God give us the Ten Commandments for our good or for our harm? Do we trust God or do we trust ourselves or the world? Where do we want to pass all of eternity? with a malevolent, a malevolent dictator, Satan, or with God, our benevolent creator. By nature, God has given to men the vocation to protect the wife, family, and society, while the woman looks at the details of the persons in the family. In God's plan, the woman inspires her husband, and the husband inspires the children, and thus the society. Studies show that the children follow much more the example of the father than the mother. In, in God's, 
for an, an example they did uh, years ago a study a secular study that if, if the husband goes to did you let's say mass every Sunday without the wife afterwards uh, uh, at least 40 percent of the kids continue the same habit whereas if the wife goes to church alone without the husband only five percent continue to have it after after they leave home it's the way God made man and woman in God's designs the husband is the head of the family and the wife is the heart of the family Satan seeks to dis confuse this perfect plan of God so as to destroy the family the fundamental cell of society secular feminism promotes power seeking envy jealousy division and upheaval instead of understanding, appreciating, and living the different vocations as different ways of serving others so as to pr procure true unity and peace. Generally speaking, the sins of the woman are more hidden than those of men, but not less grave. Y you know, it, when a man, if a woman doesn't love her husband in the house, you know, and finally he just leaves, you see the sin much more easily of the man. He left and you had sex with another woman. But you don't see the sin of the woman who didn't live her vocation as the heart and inspiration of the, of the family. But it's equally, equally bad. Years ago, in the Old Testament, and years ago, they understood this well, the, gra the, grave, the, gra the grave sin of the woman to do that. Now, it's all the fault of the man. It's always the fault of the man today. Because that's feminism, secular, secular feminism. From, from a website... In Italian, which is no longer available, one finds the following in regard to masonry and sexual. No, uh, no. T take a look at my uh, website, uh, uh, the uh, article that's called "Catholic Prophecy Today," and you can find a list of how how masonry has arrived to sexual corruption. Their documents, how they want to corrupt us. It's called a Catholic Prophecy Today, and you can find this in that article. In, God, in God's infinite wise designs, the man tends to reason with his head, while the woman tends to reason with her heart. That's the way God made man and woman. Man should listen to the heart, but make the final decision with his head. God created man and woman complementary, equal in dignity with different roles of mutual service and love not power and strife as Satan wants to promote. Because the world sees only exterior, not interior. So, so they say, well, the man is more important because he's, he's the head of the family. They don't, uh, they don't look at it from the point of view of God. The, the, the roles are equal. The head and the heart are equal, but the world only appreciates the head, not the heart. And so secular feminism uh, convinces all the women to be like the men. Because the world appreciates that. doesn't matter what God thinks, only what the world thinks, and be the glory before men. We, uh, Venerable Archbishop Fulton Sheed said, We live in a sensate age. We, no longer, we are no longer governed by faith. We are no longer governed by reason. We are governed by feelings. That's the way it is today. In, the, in, in times past, it might have been easier to understand and see the importance of the man's protection at the material and physical level. But man's role and God-given capacity as the ethical and moral protector of his family and society is even more important, even though this aspect is very little appreciated and promoted today and even strongly discouraged and ridiculed in a sly and powerful way by the mainstream media, which is leading us to the worst dictatorship in the history of the world. It is it's interesting how the sacred scriptures, in very few words, reassume the fundamental cause of the great flood. This is interesting. It's written, The sons of God took to wife the daughters of men. Genesis 6.2 it, over 90 years, you, you know, this is, it's interesting that in that, in that chapter 6 of Genesis, where you have the great flood, and the first few words of that chapter explains the cause of the flood. That's what it, that's what it wrote. It, it, it's a, 
over 90 years ago, masonry, with their right arm communism, smuggled into Europe and into the United States a great amount of pornography, so that the sons of God took to wife daughters of men, that is, the women who seduce and manipulate instead of inspiring men toward the true virtues and toward God. We are now heading toward, as Our Lady told us already, what will happen in the next few years will be much worse than the great flood in the time of Noah. May God bless you and Mary guide you.